Now we want to actually look at solving some linear inequalities. And here's some, this is the biggest thing that we have to worry about when we're solving linear inequalities. It's really not too bad. Uh, we do solve inequalities the same way that we would solve an equation, but we've got this following exception. You've got to watch out for this. When you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the direction of the inequality changes directions. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the direction of the inequality changes directions. Everything else that we did with equations is still going to be true. You can add the same thing to both sides, subtract the same thing on both sides. You can even divide both sides by the same number. However, if you're dividing both sides by a negative, the direction of the inequality changes. So let's just work through a few examples. You're going to see that's really not too bad. So for example, I could ask you to do this. Solve the inequality x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 2. I know. There's not a whole lot here. If this were equal to, x minus 7 equals 2, it would be pretty simple. Uh, even with the inequality, it's still pretty simple. All you have to do to isolate the variable is to add 7 to both sides. Okay. This is just an application of the addition property. Negative 7 and positive 7 are additive inverses and they cancel to become 0. What you have on the left side is just x. The inequality symbol is still greater than or equal to and 2 plus 7 is just 9. So, you know what? You just solved an inequality. This is all, I mean, this is it. I'm not trying to make it, I'm not trying to make up things. Now, in terms of expressing the solution, a lot of times the book is going to ask you to graph your solution set. Now, over here, the only number that I care about is the number 9. That, that's the only number I care about. Now, since this says greater than or equal to, I'm going to have a closed circle. And the reason it's going to be closed is because of the equal to. The equal to is going to give you a closed circle. Had it just been greater than, like this, it would have been an open circle. But since I've got the equal to part, it's going to make it closed. Now it says x is greater than. Now which way on the number line is greater than 9? Going out to the right. Sorry if I sound a little bit like Diego there. It's kind of difficult when no one is on the other end. So, this is showing the inequality graphed. X is greater than or equal to 9. So that means any number that is including 9 or greater will be a solution. And the way that we express this using interval notation, which is the preferred way of expressing your solution, is bracket 9 to infinity. I'm just taking this interval, this section of the number line, and I'm writing it using interval notation. Starting at 9, the bracket tells the audience that we are including 9 to infinity, so we're increasing without bound. Let's try another example. If I have 5x is less than negative 95. To solve this, you just want to get x by itself. And we see here that this is my only variable term. It's got the 5 and the way to get rid of the 5 just like we saw in the earlier parts of chapter 2, is to divide by the coefficient. So what you do on the left side, you do on the right side as well. So divide both sides by 5. And you may be thinking, Mr. Craig, wait a minute. Don't I need to change the direction of the inequality symbol? Uh, you know, let's see. When you multiply or divide, I'm doing that, both sides by negative. I'm not doing that. I'm just dividing both sides by a positive 5. Even though this is a negative number, the number I'm dividing by is a positive. So the inequality symbol does not change directions. I have just x is less than, and then you just do the math. 
negative 95 divided by 5 is going to give you a negative 19. So let's look and see what that guy looks like if I were to graph him. So here is negative 19. Will my circle here be open or closed? Since I'm less than but not equal to, this will be an open circle. Since I'm less than, which way will I shade? Well, think about it this way. Less than is going to be to the left. Less than left. And look, when you have x on the left side, you see how it's pointing. This guy's pointing to the left. So, everything to the left of this guy is going to be a solution. Now we've got to take this and express it using interval notation. Always from left to right. We remember on the far left, this is negative infinity. So we're coming from negative infinity to negative 19. Now, always put parentheses on infinity. And on negative 19, since this is an open circle, we will also put parentheses there. Remember, the only time that you're going to use a bracket is when you have a closed circle. That's the only time we're going to have a bracket. Okay? All right, let's try yet another example here. Uh, let's try negative 2x is less than negative 22. Well, it's a lot like this last problem that we had in terms of it being uh, an example of an inequality that we need to solve using the multiplication property. So what do I need to do to both sides to get rid of uh, the coefficient? That's right, I just need to divide by the coefficient, so divide by a negative 2 on both sides. And it's there that the alarm should be going off in your head. You are dividing by a negative. And just what we said up above, if you multiply or divide by a negative. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm dividing both sides by a negative. Okay, dividing both sides by a negative. So that means the direction of the inequality is going to change. So let's see what that looks like. This is just a plain positive one x on the left, and that's what I'm supposed to have. But since I divided by a negative, this inequality symbol is now going to be greater than. So x is greater than negative divided by negative is a positive. 22 divided by 2 is 11. Now we're just going to take this and graph and then express using interval notation. So the only number I care about right now is positive 11. What kind of circle am, am I going to have at 11, open or closed? Well, since the inequality is just greater than but not equal to, it's going to remain open. And since it's greater than, I'm going to graph and shade all the stuff out to the right, just like that. So when I go to interval notation, I remember that all the way out here on the right is going to be infinity. So I'm coming from 11, and I'm using parentheses because it's an open circle, and I'm going to infinity. Again, use parentheses, this time because it's infinity. So the big thing we had to watch out for here is that I was dividing by a negative number. It changes the direction of the inequality. Notice this. And then I graph x is greater than 11, so I'm going from 11 to infinity.